Um, and you know, anyone who has worked with CLT shear walls will tell you that the connections are really, really key. Um, you know, in our case, it wasn't hard at all to get the strength or the stiffness we needed out of the CLT panels themselves, but we were really much more limited by those connections. Well, hey folks, welcome back to another Timber Talk Tuesday. I'm Ricky McLean with Woodworks. One of the most common trends that we've seen in mass timber projects is the use of non-wood structural elements for lateral force resisting systems. In some cases, this is due to lack of awareness or education amongst the design team. In some cases, it's lack of code acceptance for mass timber elements in seismic force resisting systems. However, code changes are approved and are now part of the 2021 Special Design Provisions for Wind and Seismic, as well as AACE 722, now including options for the seismic design of CLT shear walls in particular. Also, several projects across the country have used CLT shear walls using different design methodologies. Today's video is about one such project, the Bowdoin College Mills Hall and Center for Arctic Studies. It's actually two buildings very close to each other in proximity, both of which used CLT for shaft walls as well as for shear walls. Now, I sat down recently with Lauren Pipo, a structural engineer with HGA who worked on this project, and we discussed the interaction with the building official, seismic design, response coefficients used, connection details, and some lessons learned from the project. So I'll step back and go over to that video now with Lauren on the CLT shear wall design at Bowdoin College. In New York. All right, Lauren, well, thanks for joining me today. Maybe we can start out by just discussing why in the first place did this project at Bowdoin College use CLT shaft walls and shear walls as opposed to other traditional building materials? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me, Ricky. Um, the suggestion to use CLT shear walls was actually um, an original suggestion from the contractor on board, which was Consigli. Um, HGA actually started with CMU shear walls during schematic design. Uh, but after SD pricing, the contractor indicated that CMU was going to be really hard on both the schedule and the budget for the project. So since we already had CLT floor and roof deck in the scope of the project, you know, adding CLT shear walls was, was kind of a nominal increase in scope for the timber supplier. Um, and it allowed us to get rid of masonry or CMU, I should say, it allowed us to get rid of CMU on the project altogether. Um, so we, we spent some time looking into the feasibility of, of CLT shear walls, you know, right at the beginning. And, and you know, what we did find, we had to add a few walls over the CMU option, um, you know, just to keep hold down forces at a reasonable level. Uh, you know, the opportunity to expose the CLT rather than having to cover the CMU wall was really appealing to the architecture team. Yeah, yeah, I bet you mentioned kind of investigating the feasibility. And I imagine one of those steps was understanding the building officials acceptance for something like CLT shear walls and shaft walls. I believe this was the first or one of the first such uses in the state of Maine. So what was that process like working with the local department? Yeah, the, the local city official was, was actually very open to CLT shear walls and mass timber in general. Um, you know, we had a meeting very early on in design to kind of discuss the possibility and see how, um, how comfortable they would be with it. And, and they pretty much said they trusted our judgment as engineers, uh, you know, from a, de a design perspective. Um, we did have one wall condition on the project at an elevator shaft that required a, a rated assembly, which required um, some buy-in from the state fire marshal. And so that was um, a little bit more, more of an effort. We had to work very closely with the fire marshal to assure him that we were following code, made sure that he understand, understood the code path um, and the rating requirements. Um, and like I said, it took a lot of back and forth and we, we had some help from Woodworks as well, uh, but we got there eventually. That's good. Yeah. Well, it's certainly good that, that the testing is in place to back up um, th that information that you shared. So um, let's jump into the structural design of the CLT shear walls on the project. Maybe you could talk a bit about was this a wind controlled versus seismic controlled design project? And then also on the seismic design side of things, what specifically like response coefficient did you use? Yeah. So uh, we were in seismic design category B with this project. So pretty low seismic. Um, and, and it was it was really close as to which one controlled wind or seismic. Um, and actually because of kind of the, the oblong shape of these buildings, uh, wind controlled in one direction and seismic controlled in the other. So we kind of had to look at both. Um, we ended up with a response coefficient of R equals three. 
Um, and, and we spent a lot of time kind of laboring over that decision at the beginning of the project. You know, we, we had seen literature suggesting two or three, um, and we ultimately decided that we could justify R equals three if we dictated that the failure mode for all the connections be a steel failure mode, so type three or four, um, you know, allowing us to rely on a more ductile failure than something like wood crushing. Um, so we worked really closely with the connection engineer, who was a fire tower engineer, Timber, uh, to make sure that we we achieved that. Um, and you know, anyone who has worked with CLT shear walls will tell you that the connections are really, really key. Um, you know, in our case, it wasn't hard at all to get the strength or the stiffness we needed out of the CLT panels themselves, but we were really much more limited by those connections. So um, getting all those connections into a type three or four failure, getting those into a kind of a more ductile steel failure uh, was really the goal. And, and we felt like we, we could achieve an R equals three with that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's key. I think we often get questions about both CLT diaphragms and shear walls, and, and people want to know what is the in-plane shear capacity of the panel. And while that information, you know, may be available, like you said, you often don't want to limit the capacity of the system to the, the capacity of the panel. It's more that to the connections to provide more ductility. Um, speaking of those connections, maybe could you just describe a few of the common types of connections you had in shear walls, like wall-to-wall -wall connections? diaphragm to wall connections? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so in terms of you know, wall panel to wall panel connection details, um, that was a, a pretty straightforward plywood spline, um, either nails or screws. And depending on how much strength we needed out of that connection, I think we had facing as tight as four rows at two inches on center in some cases where we really needed a lot of strength out of that. Um, you know, we had, as you mentioned, a uh, floor diaphragm connection to the wall. Uh, we, we went with a bearing condition. So we bared the CLT floor deck on the wall below um, and actually had the wall above come down on top of the CLT floor deck um, and connected with lag screws through the top of the floor deck into um, the, the wall below. And then there was an outside plywood spline um, connecting the top wall panel to the bottom wall panel to make sure that that shear was, was being transferred. Um, as for, you know, the, the base of panel connections, you know, we've, we've got both shear and, and uplift to consider. So for shear, um, we provided a steel angle on one side of the wall. We made sure that there was one unexposed side to every wall in the project. Um, so we kind of strategically coordinated that with our architecture team to make sure we could hide an angle on one side. And then that angle was, was screwed into the CLT wall and, and anchored to the concrete with, um, with a post installed anchor, which was designed by us. And then for uplift and overturning, um, we worked with the uh, supplier and the connection engineer to come up with um, some custom fabricated, I, I always call them boots, kind of what they look like, um, these, these angles that were lag screwed into the, the ends of the CLT panel. And then we provided a threaded hold down was embedded into the foundation, or in some cases it was post installed. Great. Yeah, I was on site just at the end of 2021. Yeah. And I thought that, <clears throat> excuse me, I thought that the design came out really nice. The project looks really nice. Um, and, and I really enjoyed seeing a lot of those details that you mentioned, the connection details at the base of, of wall, the anchorage details there. Um, I guess my last question for you is just any lessons learned that you have after working on this project related specifically to the CLT shear walls themselves. Yeah, well, you, you know, you mentioned how nice those connections looked and, you know, it, it was certainly a big effort to get there. So on that note, I would just say the, you know, the biggest lesson we learned was the importance of collaboration with the supplier and the connection engineer in this case. Yeah, you know, we were lucky that they were both brought on at the end of DD. So we had, you know, all of our construction documents phase to really tailor our design to, to what made the most sense for fabrication and shipping and erection. Um, and it gave us a chance uh, to, to really make sure we were being clear on our drawings as to which wall faces were exposed, right? Where we intended the connections to be, what walls we intended them to be hidden in, uh, and really making sure that we, we had ample room to, to kind of hide connections um, where we didn't want to see them. Um, so I really can't stress enough that, that this was certainly a team effort and, and having everybody on board was incredibly helpful. Yeah, that's awesome feedback. Thank you for sharing those lessons learned and thank you for sharing kind of the design process behind the CLT shear walls used at the Bowdoin College project. So Lauren, thank you very much for your time today. Yeah, thank you. 
Well, there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Lauren about the CLT Shearwall design at Bowdoin College in Maine with code changes and code reference standards now allowing the use of mass timber in some seismic force resisting systems and also low seismic force resisting systems, such as wind control design, as you heard Lauren talk about for this particular project. I'm interested to see how much more mass timber lateral systems we continue to see in mass timber projects going forward. I'm also curious, are you working on a mass timber project and have questions about the lateral design? Feel free to reach out to Woodworks. That's why we're here. We're happy to help. And we're a free resource to you, the building, design, development, and construction communities. Well, that's it for today's video. I thank you so much for watching. And until next time, we'll see you later.